Okay, hopefully everyone can see my presentation. Okay, um, and I'm really excited to be here. Um, given the opportunity to kind of talk about some of the things that I do at Yelp, um, one of the things that I'm really um, excited about and one thing that I always loved about this company is that we always try to keep uh, diversity and inclusion top of mind. Further ado, I'm going to present ways Yelp's keeping diversity and inclusion top of mind. And if you want to go ahead and give us some follow on the social feeds on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, or Facebook, uh, just follow us at Yelp. First of all, who am I? So a few fun facts about me. My pronouns are he and him, but I've been rocking the Yelp life since 2012. Uh, very fortunate to be with some really great community managers that are still here with me today, continuously motivating me, inspiring me, and things like that. So I really love being a part of the community team. Um, as you can see from this photo, I'm a huge film fanatic, especially scary ones. And I was able to find a photo with me wearing a shirt from my favorite movie of all time, John Carpenter's Halloween, which is very appropriate as we are going into spooky season. I'm completely obsessed with dogs, like crazy obsessed with dogs. And I um, actually follow a lot of TikToks and Instagram videos just on dogs. And that's how I pass my time. In our house, we celebrate Halloween 365 days a year. And if I had to choose just one thing to eat for the rest of my life, it would 100% be a breakfast burrito from like one of those small local greasy spoon uh, burger joints. So good. So why are you, why am I here and what are we going to talk about today? So I just thought I would outline a little mini agenda. One, just kind of talk about what a Yelp community manager does. Uh, ways that we pivoted during the pandemic because a lot of us did a lot of offline event, uh, online events and we had to go ahead and try to figure out this whole COVID-19 thing. So we'll talk about some of the ways that we pivoted, uh, some of our uh, diverse business attributes that we have on the site, um, how we spotlight, um, how we make more inclusive promo items and more. And then hopefully if I'm not going at a breakneck pace because there's so many cool things I want to talk about, uh, we'll have some time for some questions after the fact. So first and foremost, Yelp is all about the community. Our mission is to connect users with great local businesses all around the world. And uh, the group that we mostly work with is the Yelp Elite Squad. And these are our most active users who contribute a lot of great photos, a lot of great reviews, but they just really love sharing their love for local all across the world. Um, so not only are they, are they super active online, but we create these really great experiences offline so they get to meet the faces behind the reviews. Um, so this is when we're talking about Yelp community, there's all the users, but what we really strive and focus on is the Yelp Elite Squad. And if you want more information on that, or if you'd like to nominate yourself or a friend, I highly recommend you check out yelp.com slash elites for more information. And first and foremost, what is a Yelp community manager? Um, as a Yelp community manager, we focus on four different um, areas of focus, and those are community builder, event planner, marketer, and educator. Um, as I kind of mentioned before, the community building aspect is just really working with our Yelp elites. Um, you know, one, just, you know, commenting on different photos, um, encouraging, you know, different posts and things that they're doing out in the community, but it just really gives us an opportunity to interact with the great members in the community, both um, elites and non-elites. Um, we are also event planners. So we not only work with great local businesses all throughout North America, um, we get to, you know, have users come and check out like what makes this business so great for their pizza why this yoga studio is so amazing and so forth but on the same footnote we get to attend really great events too because we really like to network and see what everyone else out there is doing because there's so much cool things going on it's really hard to keep on top of everything we're also marketers so we work with a lot of really great local um, events. We look, do some national partnerships, but we just try to figure out ways that we can um, have Yelp amplify some of the great um, events in the communities. But at the same time, like what are some ways that we can do to kind of like educate people that Yelp is out there, download the app and all the other good stuff. That's just a few of the things that go within the marketer hats. For educator, we work with a lot of business owners, a lot of users, and just try to tell them like some of the best practices to navigate uh, the website, but also um, our mobile app. And because we do have community managers all across uh, the world, uh, primarily in North America, uh, these are the great smiling faces, like the ones that you see here, that are in our communities day in, day out, just really making a difference, really trying to connect, and really try to make sure that Yelp is as useful, funny, and cool as possible. And just like everyone else, we had to pivot during COVID-19. So uh, back in the day, we'd have these really great 
um, amazing in-person parties. Um, and then COVID said, nope, we're not doing that anymore. So we had to figure out a way to be able to still be able to connect people together so that we're formulating these really great communities. And we were able to do that through a variety of online activations. So, you know, with everyone else too, we tried to figure out what platform was going to work the best. And essentially we went with Zoom because that was what people were using to um, host uh, their children's daily school activities, um, but also just for a lot of work functions. So um, the great thing about it, if you haven't played with Zoom or Bevy or these other things, is like the ability to do breakout rooms because breakout rooms are so awesome. And so while we were focused on regional things before, um, our users were really able to connect from all over the place. So you would have people from Anaheim, California to San Francisco, and maybe even Buffalo, just kind of hanging out in a breakout room and just getting to know a little bit more about each other, which is really, really awesome. But for our virtual events, we want to make sure that they were impactful. So um, not only were they fun, but we wanted to create these fun cultural opportunities that can be done safely through the comfort of our Yelpers homes. So for instance, this is a really great uh, virtual event we did with Sarah E. Coffee and based out of Seattle, Washington. Um, and she was able to lead us through a traditional Ethiopian coffee ceremony, which is really awesome. Um, we were able to get kits out to people all across North America. Uh, so everyone was able to roast their own beans. They were able to create like their own coffee things, but they were actually able to get like a real good insight of what the Ethiopian coffee ceremony means on the day to day um, in that culture. Um, if you haven't checked them out, highly recommend really great black owned women owned business. Um, that's right out of Seattle, Washington. And here's like just a photo from one of the events uh, that is Jebna that came within the kits and everyone was able to make these really amazing coffee drinks uh, first thing in the morning. We also found memorable ways to replicate the in-person hands-on activities that our community always loves while spotlighting great business owners and sharing their stories. So during the holidays, um, we got to work with this other really great women-owned business named Apricity out of Orange County, where she showed everyone during the holidays how to make bath bombs for people using ingredients that they had at home. So um, again, super accessible. You didn't need to have anything um, super elaborate to be able to participate. And if you didn't have something, it was stuff that was easily sourced. Again, check out Apricity in Orange County, California. And then we wanted to figure out a way that the kiddos could still participate, but also still bring a little bit of normalcy uh, during lockdown. So though the world was closed, we were able to curate behind the scenes activities to bring some normalcy back into the lives of our community. And this was a, um, a tour of the Phoenix Zoo led by our amazing community manager, uh, Haley in Phoenix, um, where they really got to ask zookeepers questions, which the kids had a lot of fun with, but you don't realize how uh, great an event is until you're watching a sloth eat flowers. It sounds very weird, uh, but people stayed way past the hour. And again, it, it was able to bring a little bit of normalcy back to people's lives. And it was able to really show the behind the scenes for a really great business. Um, and then after the fact, they told us that they were able to get some people that saw this virtual event come back when things were a little bit safer and open. And then just making sure that things are inclusive. You know, we really wanted to make sure that we were teaching people new skills and ways to communicate. Uh, we were super fortunate to work with Andrew Moore, who um, owns ASL with Andrew, who taught everyone how to do um, ASL. Uh, so these were very basic things that people could follow along with, but it was so popular that we ended up doing a 201 series so that people could further, um, further just develop um, their ASL things that they developed in their previous course. Um, one thing that I could really just kind of strive and, you know, and I saw that they were doing this with Bevy and you could do it on Zoom is if you're not already, make sure that you're enabling the closed captions on your Zoom events, just to the sure, just to ensure that everyone could participate. Um, you know, that is one of the things that we have gotten a lot of kudos for and a lot of other brands that we follow um, get kudos for. It's something, the easiest thing you could do is just turn on the closed captions uh, so that everyone is able to follow along and still be able to engage with the content that you're producing. When things were able to open back up, we were still able to showcase and work with great local businesses and make our events a little bit more equitable. So from 500 to 500, from 50 to 500 plus uh, people, Elite Experiences really allowed us to visit a business for an offer during normal business hours. Um, this also provided a wider window when these things can be redeemed, just to make sure that we weren't impacting the everyday business. Because you know, the, as the pandemic proved, uh, everyone is short staffed. Uh, they're you know they're we're just like a lot of difficulty. So we didn't want to create 
a, any sort of things that would prohibit them from doing their day-to-day, -day, but we also wanted to be able to amplify. And the way we were able to do that is uh, with this business like Cali Coffee, which is located in uh, Tucson, Arizona. It was on the outskirts of the of the city. It's a, a, a coffee truck and Yelpers were able to go over a two week period and get two specialty drinks, one and one for their significant other friend or whoever they wanted to bring, but still be able to get some uh, cool Yelp uh, promo items in, in the meantime. But the great and the most important part for us is they were able to meet this amazing business owner and be able to interact with him, see what they do on the day-to-day -day basis, and we were still able to support local. Um, but the safety of our community is still and always will be a type, top priority and concern. So though we're trying to stay compliant with local guidelines, um, we want to make sure that uh, we make things equitable and easy to execute from the business owner side. So if you're not doing anything uh, with donuts for events, they are very popular. Um, as you can see, uh, people were able to get uh, between four and six donuts. It's this really great business. Uh, they're all over Southern California and different parts of North America called Dot and Dough, where they were uh, offering Yelpers and uh, the opportunity to taste some of their really great mochi donut samples. And it didn't just have to be about food. Uh, we were able to work with the health and beauty industry. Uh, Lather and Long Beach uh, welcomed Yelpers to uh, safely um, through an appointment system, check out these uh, really cool products that they have. So people that were keeping their skin routines or they wanted to find a new skin routine, uh, we were able to bring Yelpers into this great business. Uh, they were able to get free mini consultations while still keeping things safe. And everyone was really appreciative of that just because they watch a lot of YouTube tutorials. They see a lot of things, but they don't necessarily be able to ask the questions and get any sort of hands-on demo. So really, really great. But it also um, allowed us to work with a variety of different businesses and uh, different uh, categories as well. But the thing that I was really stoked about and still continue to be stoked about is that uh, Yelp has these really great search attributes to help us connect with great diverse businesses across the world. Um, we have different attributes such as the Asian owned business attribute, the Latinx owned, LGBTQ owned, women owned and black owned, which I'll go over and just kind of touch upon each just to give a little bit more clarity on what it is for. Um, with all these attributes, we make sure that the businesses are the ones that are self-identified because it should come directly from them not somebody from the community, just because it's up to each business to decide whether or not they want to identify with a certain group. Um, and with this, as soon as they mark themselves uh, in these different attributes, we'll send out window clings too, uh, so they can put it on their doors, um, their storefronts, however they see fit. Um, if you have any business owners that you think would really fall within this, these categories, or anyone that would maybe want more information, the first step is to claim the business pages at biz.yelp.com, and then in the attribute section, they'll be able to self-identify however they see fit. Um, for our Black-owned attribute, um, last summer, Yelp launched a searchable Black-owned business attribute in partnership with My Black Receipt, and in the weeks and months that followed, we took additional steps to reflect our ongoing support for the Black community. Um, and then on top of it, My Black Receipt is one of the first Buy Black movements that quantifies collective purchases from Black-owned businesses. This movement holds consumers accountable while publicly demonstrating support for Black-owned businesses. And during this time, it was really, really great because um, we were seeing a lot of people highlighting really great black owned businesses in their markets that didn't really have any sort of web presence. So everyone came together via social media. Everyone came together just to be able to share spreadsheets. And it was really a really cool collective effort. And I'm really proud that we were able to put together a search attribute. So it made it easier to find these businesses on the regular. On top of that, we support the 15% pledge and we um, are a part of it. Um, the 15% Pledge is an organization that calls on retailers to dedicate 15% of their shelf space to Black-owned businesses. And though while Yelp isn't a traditional retailer, we do recognize that our unique position to help consumers use their purchase power to support businesses that align with their values. We've seen an overwhelming outpouring of support for Black-owned businesses on Yelp as searches for Black-owned businesses have continued to see significant increases across all categories. Um, but this is a strong signal that our users remain committed to supporting Black the black community, as well as to continue to work towards a more equitable America. And this is not something that we just do with our search. We make sure that we follow this 15% pledge with our blog spotlights, our social media spotlights, uh, the business owners that we work with and beyond. 
For the women-owned attributes, it was really important that we celebrate and support the female entrepreneurs in our communities and across the country. Um, while incredible strides are made every day, there's always more to be done, and we feel it's critical for Yelp to be a part of this work. Uh, we're excited to be bringing more useful information to consumers and partnering with women like Rebecca Minkoff, who created and fostered real-world communities to elevate female entrepreneurs. Um, this was also a really great way just to be able to find different businesses that were women-owned that people didn't necessarily always think about. So you could always find not only your uh, next female contractor, I found my a really great female mechanic, um, but we've got you covered. And there's just like a lot, uh, we just made it a lot easier for you to ensure that women are thriving in your local community. One that's near and dear to my heart is the LGBTQ-owned attributes. Um, Pride was different last year. Uh, Pride was still different than uh, this year, a little bit more hybrid, but there was a lot to celebrate during Pride Month as chosen families and queer communities were able to reunite in the many bookstores, bars, and other businesses that they have become safe havens for the LGBTQ people across the country. Um, to help customers support these businesses and this community, Yelp makes it easier than ever for businesses to identify as LGBTQ owned or open to all. And again, this is a self-identified thing. So it's up to the business um, to actually set that on their business owner account and whether or not they want to be featured. Another really cool feature that we did this year that was different from previous years is that during the month of June, uh, all the LGBTQ owned businesses that did self-identify, they were commemorated on our heat map with a cute little rainbow pin, you know, just kind of further spotlight them um, within our communities. And then our agent owned attributes um, to help support agent owned businesses. It's more important than ever amid an alarming increase in violence targeting the Asian community and a long history of anti Asian racism in the US. And to help consumers show support and appreciation for Asian communities and businesses, we launched a new searchable Asian owned attribute for Yelp pages in amplifying the voices of Asian business owners. Um, she is, this is Julie Lim. She is one of my favorite um, women owned Asian owned businesses in Orange County. She owns OC Wine Mart. If you're ever in the area, highly recommend you uh, check her out. But just to make things a little bit more equitable, we make sure that we have Mandarin speaking representatives available for our customer support. And if you're looking at reviews, you can change the language such as traditional Chinese, Japanese, Filipino, Bahasa, Malaysia, and more on Yelp.com. So if you're just going through and scrolling through reviews, you're able to um, change the language on there so that the reviews are translated for you. And last but not least, our great Latinx owned attributes, especially as we have Latinx uh, Heritage Month upon us. Uh, to celebrate Latinx Heritage Month, we partnered with Momento Latino, an organization dedicated to serving the needs and concerns of the Latinx community to launch a new free searchable Latinx owned business attribute. Um, and we get this question a lot, like why do, you know, why do we decide to use the term Latinx? And it's just really because it encompasses a broader group of individuals with cultural ties to Latin America and or of Latin American descent. And this also includes non-Spanish speaking countries like Brazil. Um, we also want to make sure that it was gender neutral because our goal is to showcase the diversity of the Latin American community. Uh, I headed up the Pride um, committee again this year, again, something that's near and dear to my heart, but even in a virtual hybrid world, um, every month, every cultural month and every sort of diversity initiative, we tried to put together a lot of really great events. Um, we get to spotlight a lot of really great business owners, creators, and makers out in our community. Um, so, but one thing that we always try to keep top of mind is we always support businesses throughout the year. It doesn't have to be for, you know, June for Pride Month is the only time that we celebrate LGBTQ owned businesses. We don't just celebrate black owned businesses in February, Latinx in um, September, October. It's really important to keep this top of mind and we support these great uh, businesses in our marginalized communities throughout the whole year. But for uh, this Pride, I was really stoked on it because uh, we were really able to amplify like the voices of our community and just some cute little stats. Uh, we were able to host 12 events that had over a thousand RSVPs. We produced a top 100 LGBTQ owned bars blog, a virtual cocktail competition benefiting the Lesbian Bar Project. We had some citywide partnerships and one of my favorite events uh, led by our amazing um, community member, uh, community managers, uh, where she uh, did a fireside chat with the founder of Free Mom Hugs. So um, definitely check that out on our Yelp blog. Julie's amazing. And she, again, is one of those people that always keeps diversity top of mind. So, um, you know, our fellow colleagues are always pushing us to do better and finding these great voices out in our community as well. 
but social media as well. We make sure that we're amplifying these voices um, and stories of the amazing business owners in our community. So we do um, some monthly highlights called Meet the Biz and Meet the Owner and Meet the Owner, which features um, throughout North America. So though at Yelp is a our national handle, each of our small markets and each of not small, each of our markets have like their own individual handle. So you can follow, you know, great local businesses, get the uh, get some insight on them, but we also try to give uh, a platform so that we can introduce you to the businesses and their owners as well. Um, you know, talking about the 15% pledge at the very beginning, we make sure that we are making sure that our content is very diverse. So uh, we 100% still make sure that the 15% pledge applies to this. And we have 15% of our social content feature black owned businesses, creators or community members as well. And if you're not already, I highly recommend you follow your local handle uh, so that you could see some great insights and maybe some gems that you didn't even know were in your own backyard. One thing I was super proud of again this year is we were working to make more inclusive promo items, and uh, these were our pronoun pins that we are not that we were able to distribute during Pride. But this is something that we're really going to be distributing throughout the whole year and beyond. Um, not only do we want business owners to be able to self-identify, we want to help our community members share their preferred pronouns to normalize asking without assuming in conversations. We've had so many community members reach out and say how I'm, you know how much this meant to them because, you know, again, something just asking about pronouns just makes things so much more inclusive for the people that are on your platform and out in your communities as well. So one of the easiest you could do, ask for pronouns and again, normalize it as well. And then for our blog posts, you know, you go to, I know I plugged it at the beginning, yelp.com slash blog, but we have so much amazing content um, and we throw it, uh, we put it up um, every single Throughout the, throughout the whole year, um, you know, yes, there are some more blogs during different uh, diversity months, but we really make sure that it's as diverse as much as possible throughout the whole year. So um, during March, I was able to curate this really graph, this curate this really great blog post um, featuring great trans-owned businesses across North America. During the holidays, we were able to highlight some great Black-owned businesses that ship nationally so that people could, you know, uh, celebrate and support uh, no, no matter where they lived. Um, highly rated Latinx coffee shops. And then Gretel, our great Atlanta OTP person, was able to make uh, create this really great blog post, which was Meet the Amazing that meet the Asian American Pacific Islander business owners of OTP. Um, and this is just some of the content and it's not even scratching the surface. So if you're uh, looking to find these really great stories and things like that, I highly recommend that you check out our blog, which again, once again, which is yelp.com slash blog. I know I said a lot of things. Like I said, I'm very excited about all the things that we continue to do. But one of my main takeaways is like, don't just spotlight diversity during certain months. Make it a priority throughout the whole year um, because visibility really matters and curate some more inclusive um, community regardless of what they're a part of. Um, you know, some bullet points, be intentional about the work. Your community is going to know if this is just something that you're doing because it is a, a month or is it something that you really stand by? So just make sure that you, you know, if you're putting out these initiatives, you're putting out these, um, these statements, make sure that you're following through with it. Be intentional. People can see right through it. Um, make it a, a make it a more concentrated effort to feature work and work with diverse event partners and hosts. There's so many people out there um, that you get to work with. Are you making sure that you're making it equitable and you're giving everyone a voice? That's really important. And again, when I restart a meeting or anything like that or an event, state your pronouns when introducing yourself because again, it might be really, really inclusive to somebody that's in there that may not have those interactions on the day to day. Again, enable closed captioning on your virtual events and meetings if you have the opportunity. And again, one thing that we're really proud of, get feedback from your community and really turn it into action because you have some amazing people out there. And, you know, no, even though you can't put everything in action, it's just really good to kind of take it and, you know, you know, see how you might be able to implement it in the future. Because again, you know, our community is, all of our communities are super diverse and they're all very opinionated, but they also have some really great ideas, especially if you start seeing a theme. Um, yeah, but that is what I have for right now. Okay. Fantastic. Ryan, thank you very much. There's so much content, so many so really, much. really cool efforts. Um, and actually we've run out of time. There's been so many, uh, really cool questions, but, um, I guess that they're able to connect with you on uh, social media and of course, all the channels that you've mentioned and, uh, perhaps uh, those questions might be answered partly or in full. 
um, definitely lots of efforts and uh, thank you for going through all of them in such detail. Um, you know, it's amazing, you know, um, uh, what your, what your company is doing, you, you know, to address these issues. So um, definitely, definitely really, really great presentation. And thank you very much for your time. Um, so uh, just uh, running over to uh, the, the last session of uh, the day. And uh, thank you, Ryan, once again. So um, uh, please do uh, use CMX Summit Rise when you're sharing um, uh, that you are in uh, this conference. So um, uh, all the best. And uh, thanks again for listening. Thank you for your time. I hope it's been really, really nice. And uh, well, I look forward to uh, seeing you again in another session. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. All the very best. Bye now. <laughs>